We finally start with section five and the third session is about the requirements. We have to define the requirements of the project after we start with the planning. It's in fact the first step in the planning process, so it's a very important step. What tools can we use to collect these requirements? There are different requirement categories. We will define them here and there will have some comments on those requirements. What are the requirements? In fact, the requirements are exactly what the client needs from a project. They relate to the resolution of the problem or attaining the objectives of the project. It can also be related to the way the work will be managed, the capabilities of the result, business, legal, procedural and quality related issues. And it's important to gather those requirements straight from the client. But we have to take into account that some stakeholders other than the client may also have a say in this. Think about projects where we have environmental groups being part of the stakeholders. We have to guarantee compliance with the business case and the company strategy. Everything we do with the project has to be compliant with these two elements. So let's have a look at some important tools to collect these requirements. A very important element that we can build up once we start doing projects is historical information. Historical information relates to all the projects that we have done before and we may find some interesting elements there. Let's look at some interviews with focus groups like we saw in the Lexus case, some people were interviewed and finally, based on those interviews, the requirements were defined. We have facilitated workshops. We bring people together with a facilitator to gather all the requirements. Brainstorming is very interesting and there are a lot of different nominal group techniques that can be applied. I find mind maps very interesting because mind maps let you think or write down the, the things you have in your mind in the way that your mind works. It's a very interesting technique to apply. Of course, there are other tools that we can use and we will look at them in the next slide. Of course, we still have our multi-criteria decision analysis which can help us to collect requirements. There are questionnaires and surveys we can send to the people. Certainly when you're doing a project for a company which involves a lot of the people. Uh, we had a project like that within AT&T when we had to move our offices to a new location and questionnaires and surveys were conducted to find out what solutions the people would prefer. We can look at observation, we can make prototypes to see if it, come, uh, if it works with our requirements. We can do benchmarking or compare us with other companies to see how they are doing. And it's a good idea to do benchmarking to set our requirements compared to our competitors. There are context diagrams and there are group decision making methods like the Delphi method where we gather subject matter experts which will give their idea about the project. When we look at requirements there may be different types of requirement categories. First of all requirements related to the business. What are the reasons that we are doing this project? The second category relates to stakeholders. What is the expectation of the stakeholders? What are they going to gain or what are they going to lose? 
requirements related to the solution, like functional requirements, uh, reliability is very important. Think about uh, air, uh, airplanes and the reliability of the components. Uh, security, look at IT security, level of service, how can we uh, service the solution, all kinds of elements related to that specific solution that we want to build. Requirements about transition, uh, what handover documents do we have to create, what are the training needs, uh, all these elements which are typically completed at the end of the project and when we do the handover of the project during the closeout phase, this becomes very important. Uh, requirements related to the project itself, how do we manage the project? Quality, um, what do we define with quality? What is the level of quality? We should not have too much quality, but the quality should be compliant with the needs, what the product has to deliver. And then there are technical requirements which re relate to the building specifications of the product. Let's look at the uh, requirements documentation. For the PMI, documentation is very important. Uh, the documentation is kept, is saved in the historical information. It's kept with the project and it will help the project manager and team to defend the solution that they completed. Stakeholders uh, may also change. Uh, it's very important to understand what requirements came from uh, whom, where do those requirements come from. When people change in a function, the requirement may have been stated by a function, but when the person in charge of the function is changed, the ideas may be different. So it's very important that you have a written proof that this stakeholder, this function, wanted to have a specific requirement in case there is a discussion later on during the closing of the project. The requirements always have to contain the acceptance criteria. For PMI, like I said before, documentation is very important in adaptive in adaptive environments, this is not always the case, and sometimes that leads to discussions and problems. When we have to balance requirements, well, sometimes we may have a large number of requirements, which becomes very difficult to take into account all the requirements. There may be conflicting requirements, and it's not always to find the best common solution. Another way to get through the requirements when you have a large number of requirements is to order them in importance, the highest importance to the lowest importance, and then you will filter out what is possible and what is not possible. I come back to our case about the Lexus. In the Lexus case, there were complex, uh, there were conflicting requirements. One of them was reducing the consumption of the car and the noise volume. Now, why are these conflicting requirements? First of all, reducing the noise volume in the car is typically done by adding isolation materials. On the other hand, noise is created by all the components and noise is energy, so all noise that is created is a loss of energy. Taking away the isolation would reduce the weight, would be very good for reducing the consumption, but on the other hand, the noise volume would increase. So what they had to do, they had to reinvent many of the parameters, reducing friction, reducing vibrations to reduce the noise volume. Like I said before, doing that, it also had a positive effect on the consumption 
because reducing those losses makes your system, the car, engine plus everything, a lot more efficient. So, we finished this first session related to requirements. Important because requirements are the first step in the planning. We have to translate what the customer wants into the requirements. The customer and the stakeholders have to agree with those. So now we are ready to go to the next session, which is about defining the scope. See you there. Great job.